out, we've run our motion study, we've kind of got an idea of what kind of situation we've got going on. What I want to do is I want to kind of rerun an FEA analysis, find that element, try to figure out what kind of stresses we've got on our model, see what we can do to uh, improve the design, really understand what's going on in this thing so that we can hopefully improve it, make it stronger, and verify that it's not going to fail once we get it out into the field. Okay, so this is where we're going to start out with our model. And it's, again, weldments and sheet metal. And so what I'm going to do is go ahead and start a brand new study. I'll come up and say new study, and make sure you label everything as, as much as you can as you go along. It's going to help everything in the long run. So I'm going to call this just uh, static loading. Click OK. And it's going to build up my study tree for a static analysis. So let's start at the top, work our way down, and take a look at some of the assumptions we're going to make for a, for a cart like this. First thing that you're going to see is the solid bodies folder. We've got some of these are automatically treated as beams because they were created with weldments. We've also got some that are created as uh, treated automatically as surfaces because we used sheet metal. Now I've got two solid bodies. This would normally be treated with a solid tetrahedral mesh, but in this case I really don't care whether or not these things fall off. So what I'm going to do, instead of simply suppressing them, I can come in here, select them, right click, and exclude from analysis. And all that does is it leaves them there so I can still see them, and I don't have to go change my model, but I don't have to worry about meshing them. Everything looks good here. All the thicknesses are specified in the sheet metal. All the materials are already specified because the model was done. Now, the joint group was also automatically specified. All the pink dots are where everything is successfully connected to a neighboring uh, member. All the green dots are where it's not specified or, you know, connected to the next member. And in all of those cases, we're going to have to manually specify the contacts between the weldments and the sheet metal or the surfaces. We've got a global bonded contact that's not going to help us between a mixed mesh environment. So I'll simply start adding my contact sets. Now here I've got a bonded contact. You have to specify whether you're doing faces, joints, or beams. I want to do joints, and I want to take these bottom joints, six joints along the bottom here, make sure I grab the right one, and I want to put that up against this face. Now this face is not the shell face, it's going to create a mid-surface uh, shell, but it will transfer that down to the other face. So I need to specify bonded, everything looks good, I'll click OK. And what I'll do is I'll go ahead and continue through creating bonded contacts or individual contact sets between the various joints and the faces they connect. And we have one more here to go ahead and connect the, uh, the garment hanger to the top of this sheet metal part. Okay, so that should take care of most of the contacts above the, the base, but now we need to connect these bottom members to the base. So another contact set. This time, instead of bonding surface to, con to uh, beam joints, we're going to do uh, surface to actual beam elements. So here's my face, and I want to connect these beams to it. So I'll select the beams and the face. Everything should be connected up at this point. All the beams are already bonded to each other, and the beams are now connected to the shell meshes. So everything's connected, but we need to stabilize the entire system. We cannot allow any um, rigid body motion. In other words, we can't just have parts flying off. Otherwise, the solver is not going to be able to uh, converge on a solution. So we need to make some, some uh, fixtures. Now, you don't want to overdefine your fixture because, for instance, the bottom of this, uh, this assembly or this uh, cart might actually stretch or bend in some ways based on the loading. 
So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to do a fixed geometry at these two joints to simulate where the casters are going to attach. But I don't want to fix all of them because that might restrict some, some bending. So I'm just going to restrict those two and then I'm going to create another fixture and I'm going to fix these, uh, these other two ends. Now this fixture, I just don't want it to move up and down. So I'm going to use a use reference geometry and specify that there is no out of plane motion. And so what that's going to do is it's going to restrict up and down motion but still allow uh, rotation if there's any sort of bending. Now for the loads. For the loads here I'm going to just go ahead and apply a force. I'm going to specify one force for the luggage. And I'm not sure exactly how much luggage we're going to have, but I'm guessing we could have up to 2,000 pounds of luggage on this thing. So we're going to try it out and we're going to see what happens. We want one more load. This one's going to be on the garment rack. Now notice I specified a face here. I actually don't want to specify that face because I want, it's actually a, when it's meshed it's a beam. So I'll choose selected direction and then choose the beam. And what this will do is it will allow me to, uh, to specify it on the beam itself. This will be, let's say, 250 pounds. We'll pretend somebody that's kind of big is actually playing on it and hanging on it. We'll make sure that's going to handle that. So be real careful. Anytime you're applying restraints or you're applying forces or even contacts, you need to pay attention to what the model looks like, but more specifically, how you're treating it in the mesh. Because that mesh treatment uh, is going to need to be attached to those fixtures, those, those loads. Okay, so we've got our loads here. I'm going to do a little bit of labeling so I can kind of see what's going on. Okay, that looks really good. All right, so let's see if we can get this thing to mesh. So I'm just going to right click and create mesh. I'm going to leave it at the default settings. Everything else should be good to go when I click OK. All right, so we've got our mesh up here and uh, everything looks pretty good. We've got a nice mesh on the uh, shells. The beams, you're going to notice, there are more or less an arbitrary size, uh, so don't get too caught up in the actual shape. They'll always be round regardless of the actual shape, but the section properties will be correct. So, assuming everything's good, we should be able to run and get some... All right, so we've got our mesh up here. All right, so we've got some results. Now, the first thing you might notice is our frame is gone. Now, in a normal situation, that's going to be a bad thing. The difference is, in this situation, we're actually working with a mixed mesh, beams and shells. So if you actually edit the definition, you're going to see you have the option of showing solids and shells or showing beams. So we'll actually have to show for stress plots two different versions of this. So this is a good one, von Mises stress on solids and shells, and we can take a look. I think my units are a little off here, I want to, I want to actually do PSI. So we're looking at about 60,000 PSI at the max, and that is right there at the connection point. So let's take a look at what else we've got going on here. As our standard plots, here's a displacement plot. Looks like our maximum displacement is about four millimeters, or let's flip this over to inches, and uh, about 0.15 inches. So that's pretty reasonable. Uh, total deflection there at the ends of these the garment racks. So let's take a look at what other kinds of plots we can create. First with the stress plot, let's take a look at our beams. So just right click on my results folder to define a stress plot and this one's going to be for beams. Highest axial and bending. So there we go. Uh, looks like our by far our largest stresses, as ex might be expected, are going to be at this joint where we have our highest bending moment. And if you want to know how much the bending moment is, you can also create a beam diagram. And for the beam diagram, we can say, let's say, uh, moment and direction one, and let's just do this beam here. So I click OK, and there is my moment. As you can see, because of the distributed load, we're getting sort of a parabolic uh, distribution of this bending and we have our max bending of 562 inch-pounds. So there's a lot of information that you can pull off of the model after it's already been run. 
Let's take a look at our displacement plot because our displacement plot and specifically the animation of our displacement plot is going to be a really our good indicator to make sure that we've set everything up right. Because quite often when you set up a study, you're going to run it and you're not really sure whether or not you're going to get a good result. For instance, you're not sure whether or not the welding contacts you did at all the joints was correct. You're not sure whether or not um, all the forces took. And so if you look at the displacement plot, you can really get a good idea and get a good feeling for whether or not this thing is even going to um, give you good results. So if it behaves as expected, you should be good to go. And in this case, it looks like we're doing pretty good. Uh, another test you could do would be to plot reaction forces. And if the reaction forces summed up to be the input forces, you know you're solid because all the forces got transmitted through the model as expected. So our highest stress in this model is 13,000 PSI in the beams and 60,000 PSI on this, uh, this sheet metal part. So we might want to consider beefing this up, perhaps doubling the wall, adding some stiffeners or some way to spread out that load. Because obviously we're able to handle the load, but that point loading, that welding location, we're going to need to spread that out. So. All right, so we've got some results. Now, 